public has been hot, and they're active once again here in Week 9. Six public sides, including a pair of public underdogs. Double red flag alert. I'm going to give you the six most public sides with analysis, let you know how to play these games, where we should play them, fade them, how to make some money. That's coming up free for you in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with your Week 9 NFL Fade the Public Report for this weekend, Sunday, November the 3rd. Also, your Monday night game, November the 4th, included in this report as well. Hey, the public started off just 15-9. and Fading the public started off 15-9 and the first four weeks of the NFL season, but the public has come back with a vengeance going 18-6 and the past four weeks on the most public sides in this video. I'm going to give you the six most public sides, including a pair, double red flag alert, of public underdogs here in just a moment. But first, let's start with the most public play this week, and it's not a surprise they become one of the more public darlings this season, and that's not my Washington Commanders against the New York Giants. This is by far the most public play here in Week 9. And look, I'm getting ever so closer to getting on the bandwagon. I pulled out the old Joe Gibbs hat from the 80s, and this one is probably one of my favorites. It's got all three Super Bowl logos on it as well. Could we perchance be adding a fourth Super Bowl logo? They're now 6-2 and two straight up. Never in doubt win against the Chicago Bears last week. Jaden Daniels scrambles around, throws the Hail Mary. This does smell like a letdown spot now against the Giants. And I do think this is a situation in which we can fade the public. Now look, the public has done extremely well this year. In fact, they're 4-1 and one when playing on the Commanders, including last week, once again, they were a public dog. Now, that was a little bit misleading, though, because they went off as a favorite when Daniels was upgraded and ended up starting the game. But when I did the video last week and heading Friday night, heading into the weekend, they were a three-point dog. Hey, but look, the public got it right. They're now 4-1 and one this season in the eight weeks. They've played them five of those eight weeks, and they've cashed four of the five times. So they've made a lot of money with the Commanders. I do think they're for real. However, the defense still is questionable. And this is also an interesting scheduling situation here. Not only is it a possible letdown, obviously, after the Hail Mary win and now traveling to play a team they've already beaten, but it's the first time that Jaden Daniels will have a repeat opponent. And I do think there's an advantage for the Giants since they've already faced him. And New York actually has the most sacks this season, the most pressures. They get to the quarterback pretty well. And let's not forget, if I told you the Giants, who are actually a smaller underdog back in Week 2 on the road, a two-and-a-half-point dog compared to being now a four-point dog, at home. If I told you back in that second game of the season, they were actually, they closed it about a one point dog, I believe. But if I told you they're going to have a three touchdown to none edge as a one point underdog, how much would you have bet on them? Well, problem is their kicker got hurt on the opening kickoff. Garneau never came back. They missed an extra point, had to go for two in the other. So they only scored 18 points. Commanders got 21 points on seven field goals. They were 0 for 6 in the red zone, 0 for 3 last week in the red zone against the Bears. So Commanders are showing some weaknesses, and I think New York can take advantage. Look, the Giants are a terrible team. The public has faded them with success quite often, including each of the past two weeks. But I do think this is a bad spot for the Commanders. This will be a week, I think, where you can fade the public. Take a look at the Giants plus four. And once again, Commanders the most public play this week, and I would recommend fading them in this situation. That goes at 1 o'clock Eastern. All right, the next most public play on the board also at 1 o'clock Eastern, is in the AFC, and that's the Buffalo Bills minus the six points over the Miami Dolphins. You know, we were close to a 2-0 sweep last Sunday, but the Dolphins gave up a 10-point lead, ended up losing to the Cardinals. Um, I did think they would play better with Tua Tungavaiola back in the lineup, and he had a pretty good outing. In fact, uh, it's three times he's played this season. It was the first time he played since Week 2 when he had a terrible outing against the Buffalo Bills when he threw three interceptions. Uh, but he's had a 2-0 ratio in his other two games this year, <clears throat> 101 and 98 QB ratings, including last week. So I do think this offense will be a lot better going forward if Tua can remain healthy. Dolphins have struggled against the Bills at times, and Bal Dolphins have also struggled when stepping up in class against good opponents the last several years. Um, but once again, the public is heavy on Baltimore, uh, Buffalo rather, minus six. Uh, the key for me in this game is if Tunga Viola can help this offense continue to improve. Their passing numbers for the season are very mediocre, but once again, that's misleading because if you look at the other quarterbacks, they had mainly Tyler Huntley, also Skylar Thompson for a while. Uh, their QB ratings were much weaker uh, than Tua's this year and his career ratings. So I do think this could be a fairly high-scoring game. Uh, that total has gone from 48 up to 49.5. But once again, Buffalo Bills minus 6, the second most public side this week in the NFL for Week 9. All right, the third most public side is actually your Sunday night game on NBC. And this game was flexed into the Sunday night spot, 820 Eastern. 
And this is Indianapolis at Minnesota. Now, I did a full deep dive standalone video. I do all the Sunday and Monday night games for you, deep dive videos. also do those Thursday night games. So about a month and a half ago, I'm going to do all the primetime videos for you for free here on Wager Talk TV. By the way, if you're liking it, comment below. Let me know if you like these free play videos, and I will keep them coming. Also, thumbs up, like is greatly appreciated. But in the standalone video that I did for this Sunday night game, I mentioned that Joe Flacco has now been announced as the starting quarterback going forward. They are benching Tyler Huntley and or Tyler Huntley. That's the Dolphins. He's also been benched. No, Anthony Richardson, of course, the Colts young quarterback. And boy, has he struggled this season. Four touchdowns, seven interceptions. Meanwhile, Flacco, seven TDs, one interception in his four appearances this year, four games. 102 quarterback rating for the 39-year-old Wiley veteran, whereas the youngster Richardson, a 57.2 rating. So this quarterback change seems like a no-brainer to me, and I do think it'll help spark the Colts. But one of the other things I mentioned in that standalone video, for those of you who have seen it already, that the Colts are the best point spread team in the NFL this year. Most people probably don't realize that because they're just four and four straight up, but they're seven and one against the number. Indianapolis Colts have been a very profitable seven and one. Minnesota, meanwhile, five and two straight up in ATS. But of course, they enter here off back to back losses. Uh, public likes Minnesota, though, here. I'm a little surprised you'd be fading a team that is seven and one against the spread. But they haven't been a very public team, and that's one of the reasons they continue to cover. Um, this line was as high as 6.5 when it opened. Even saw a 7 last week at DraftKings. It's now 5.5. So Minnesota's the public side here, but I'm not sure this line is necessarily inflated like is often the case with other public plays. And the Vikings should be fully focused here off back-to-back -back losses the last couple weeks. And keep in mind, that Thursday night spot was an extremely public spot for Minnesota last week. They came up short against the Rams. But it was a tough scheduling situation. They played the Lions near miss against Detroit and then had to travel on three days rest to play that Thursday night or across country. Um, I do look for a better effort here, but I think this could be a high scoring game. I actually used the over in that free play video. And if you look at this matchup here, Flacco's throwing the ball well. Vikings obviously very capable offensively as well. I think this is a situation which the over might be the safer play over 46 and a half compared to either side. But once again, Minnesota Vikings minus the five and a half, the third most public play this week. And that is your Sunday night game on NBC. Hey, speaking of that game was flexed into the uh, spotlight. The game that probably was initially going to be the Sunday night game, if you look at the bottom of the rotation, is Jacksonville, Philadelphia. And that's interesting because Philadelphia is also a very public side. The fourth most public favorite this week is the Philadelphia Eagles minus the seven and a half. That goes at 4.05 Eastern. You know, the public faded Jacksonville last week and they came up a point short. And I've always said one of the reasons fading the public does work in a lot of situations is because you get a adjusted line value. When they're getting heavy one-sided action, unless the sharps come in on the other side, it does inflate the point spread. And that's exactly what happened last week as Green Bay was about a four-point favorite on the road. They won by only three points, 30 to 27. Hard to trust this Jacksonville pass defense, though. They're still one of the worst in the league, giving up 7.7 .7 yards per pass, 70% completions against teams that average just 6.2. Eagles are averaging 7.3. So Jalen Hurts and company should have plenty of success throwing the ball. Um, Hurts props passing over, receiving props over, all make a lot of sense here. Also, uh, if you have Hurts on your fantasy team, which I happen to, by the way, first time in 50 years I've ever played fantasy football. A bunch of high school buddies. We put in 20 bucks each. I hadn't logged in since draft night, and half my guys a few weeks ago when the Eagles were on the bye, half my guys weren't even active, and I still almost won that week. That's why I don't do fantasy football, but I do have Jalen Hurts as my quarterback this year. I've got some other Eagle offensive players, so they should have a pretty good outing this week against a really bad Jacksonville defense. But once again, 7.5 is the number, and I mentioned how last week Jacksonville snuck in with that one-point cover. Is this line inflated again? you got to make a case for the Eagles as a teaser, right? Taking them down to minus one and a half looks like a pretty solid teaser. And I would expect Philly to be one of the more popular teasers this week. Uh, but be careful with this point spread. I do think the public has inflated this one uh, to above that key number of seven. Total, once again, might be the best way to play this game, in my opinion. I think the over makes a lot of sense over the 45 and a half to 46. As I mentioned, Philadelphia should have plenty of success offensively in this game. And Jacksonville is also capable of moving the ball. They're averaging five yards per carry, 6.8 yards per pass. Overall, six yards per play against teams that allow just 5.6. Um, Eagles defense has been slightly above average, but I think both offenses can move the ball here. Um, once again, the total, 45.5, 46. The over makes some sense for me in this one at 4 o'clock Eastern. 
All right, those are the four most public favorites this week in the NFL. All go on the Sunday afternoon card and nighttime card with that Sunday nighter as well. Going to get to two public underdogs. Double red flag alert, two public dogs here in just a moment. Quick reminder, though, if you want to get my official best bets, look, we don't just blindly fade the public or play the public. We pick our spots. And we've done quite well picking our spots with best bets over the years. In fact, I'm extremely selective. I have maybe two to three NFL best bets each week, three to four college basketball, uh, college football best bets. College basketball, though, the reason that's on my mind is it starts this coming week. The NBA, of course, is here. Uh, 60% start this season to the NBA should be no surprise. The last three years combined, I've won over 200 units in the NBA alone. We just won almost 100 units this baseball season. In fact, we're up over 165 units this calendar year as we head into the weekend in all sports. And we still have two more months to go in 2024 and a huge 2025 around the corner. Starting next week, we're going to have college and pro football, college and pro basketball. Four of the five major sports I handicap go starting next week. So yes, this is a great time to be an all sports, all access subscriber. And right now you can get an $811 discount on a one-year all access with promo code SM365. Why 811? Because that gets it down to exactly $99 a month, just over $3 a day, just about a dollar and a half per play for every football, basketball, and baseball, college, and pro best bet for the next 365 days and nights. Make sure you use promo code SM365 for that instant $811 discount on the one-year all-access pass. Now, if you have football, I know many of you already have the rest of the football season. If you do want to add my incredible NBA service, you can try it a month for just $149. That works out to less than $5 a day for every NBA best bet for the next 30 days and nights. Once again, we also have an NBA 30-day sampler for just $149 this weekend. No promo code needed for that one. Check it out, along with the daily free plays. Don't forget, I post a free play each and every day on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. All right, let's look at the two most public dogs this week, and these are both fade the public selections as well. Very public dog on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock Eastern, the Denver Broncos. Who would have thought Denver is now a public play? But it makes sense. Look, they've covered five of their last uh, seven games after going 0-2 straight up to start the season. Uh, they've gone 5-1 and straight up and against the spread the last six. So they've covered five of their last six and overall six of their eight this year. They've been a very profitable team. Public used them last week as they faded the terrible Panthers, and they came out ahead. Um, Denver also had that big Thursday night win for the public a few weeks ago um, when they were a three-point favorite at New Orleans. But let's put it in perspective. Uh, Saints and Panthers are combined 3-13 and 13 straight up this season. Uh, this is a huge step up in class for the Denver Broncos. Now the concern if you're playing Baltimore in lane nine and a half is that Denver technically has the better defense. So you are getting the better defensive team is more than a touchdown dog. Problem is I'm not sold on the passing attack. And yes, Bo Nix has played a lot better over the past month compared to the first month of the season. The rookie is getting better. And Baltimore's pass defense has been pretty weak this season. That's been their biggest weakness. But their run defense has been very strong, and their rushing offense has been fantastic. They're averaging over 6 yards per carry, 200 yards a game. And the Broncos have been very mediocre against the run this year. In fact, their opponents played have averaged 108 per game. The Ravens averaged 200. The Broncos' strength has been a fantastic pass defense, but I do think Baltimore can run the ball in this game and it does look like maybe a little bit of a flat spot for Denver. And then on top of that, we get the Ravens coming off a bad loss at Cleveland last week. If you recall, the public liked Baltimore. That was one of the spots here in the video I said I would fade the public. In fact, my free play of the week on my page last Sunday for everybody was the Cleveland Browns plus 8.5. So that loss did not surprise me. I thought it was a really bad scheduling spot for Baltimore as they were coming off the high-profile wins. In fact, they'd come off five straight wins including games against Dallas, Buffalo, Cincy, Washington, Tampa National TV. That was a huge flat spot last week, so I don't worry too much about the loss. I think they bounce back this week. Uh, this is a spot where I would look to fade the public once again and use the Ravens minus the 9.5 as the public likes the Denver Broncos as the biggest public dog of the week. What's the other public dog? Well, you probably figured it out by now. I told you to have the Monday night game. That's right, Monday night football. The public is on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers plus the 9 as well as they're going against the Kansas City Chiefs. Not something we see that often, but once again, whenever you get a team that has a nice-looking offense like Tampa and they're getting more than a touchdown, the public starts to drift that way. But I was a little surprised to see Tampa make the cut as a public dog, seeing how they've lost three of their last four, both straight up and against the spread. Uh, Kansas City, of course, remains undefeated. 
uh, this season. But I did a standalone solo video for this game. And as I mentioned in that video, I think the total is the best way to attack it. Over 45 and a half for Monday Night Football. Uh, this line did open as low as 44 and a half. It's been bet up to 45 and a half this week. But I agree with that sharp money move on the over. Um, Kansas City, yes, they're a good defensive team, but Tampa's been really good offensively this year. 29 and a half points a game, almost six and a half yards per play, five yards a rush, seven and a half yards per pass. So if they get behind in this game, they do have some backdoor cover potential and also the ability to put up a late touchdown. Um, Kansas City's offense, once again, they're not as flashy as they've been in years past, uh, but they still throw the ball well. Their rushing attack has been what's been pretty weak this year. Um, and Tampa's run defense has given up 5.2 yards per carry. So I do think Kansas City will have more success running the ball in this game, and Tampa can move it as well. So Tampa Bay is a public dog plus nine on Monday night football, but I think the total over 45 and a half might be the best way to attack this game. Monday night, 815 Eastern on ESPN and, of course, ABC. Hey, those are your six most public sides for week nine of the NFL. You know, after this weekend, we'll be halfway, halfway through the NFL season. Hard to believe. Public has been incredibly hot in the month of October, but November is here. This is often when they start to cool off. Do you think this could be the week? Where do you agree or disagree with the public? Comment below. I read the comments. I reply back. What are some other games you like this week in the NFL? Let's learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. And don't forget, if you like any player props, include those as well. I don't talk a lot of player props here in the video, but I know many of you do quite well with them. So if you like some player props, hey, drop some analysis with them as well. Always love the feedback here, and I do truly read all the comments and reply back. If you're liking these videos, comment on that as well, and make sure you click the thumbs up like button, as that is greatly appreciated. Boom, you did it. I knew you could click that thumbs up like. I do appreciate the support. Don't forget when you subscribe, click subscribe here. I know most of you have, but make sure you click that bell as well when you subscribe to Wager Talk TV, because you'll get an instant alert when this Fade the Public video goes up every weekend. Also, my college football top 25 video, all the daily and weekly free play videos. You know, I try to do a lot of the weeknight college football games. I mentioned the Thursday, Sunday, Monday night NFL games I do every week. In fact, those Thursday night NFL games are 6-1 and one this season. Just been an amazing run on those Thursday night free plays here on the video. So make sure you click subscribe and click the bell as well, along with thumbs up, like, and commenting below. And once again, on the way out, if you'd like to get my strong official best bets for this weekend in the NFL and all my basketball plays daily, the NBA 60% start this season, up over 200 units the last three years. In fact, I'm number one all time in the history of wager talk in units one in the NBA. And now College Hoop starts next week as well. We were number one in college hoops a few years ago. Just a great time to be an all-sports, all-access client. And the price has never been better. About a dollar per play when you use promo code SM365. Take a serious long-term investment approach and get a full year, 365 days and nights of football, baseball, and basketball, college and pro for just over $3 a day, about a dollar to a dollar and a half per play. Promo code SM365 gets you over an $800 instant discount. Now, once again, if you want to try out basketball for 30 days, I do have that NBA sampler through this weekend for just $149. 30 days and nights of the NBA for less than $5 a day. No promo code needed on that package. Look, you don't have to memorize the promos or special offers. They're on my page every day. I give detailed analysis with those promo codes and special offers. It's right below the best bets and the daily free play. Don't miss that free play for this NFL on Sunday. We had the Browns outright last week as an 8.5-point dog. We'll try to top that with another free play winner this Sunday. You can also see all the previous best bets, a rolling recap of the last 20 best bets each day. You can click on any of them to read the analysis afterwards as well. And when you're ready to get on board, keep in mind it's quite simple. If I have a play, my clients get it. Every client gets the same play, whether it's a one-day, a one-month, a one-year pass. It doesn't matter. If I have a personal selection, you get them as well as my direct clients. And this is my 29th football season as a full-time professional handicapper. I know how to win. And all sports entering this weekend up over 165 units this calendar year already. Check it out. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Hey, get there quicker with shortcut WT. Dot buzz slash SM. Follow me on social media as well, at Steve Merrill. You know the deal, 2Rs1L, at Steve Merrill, 2Rs1L, at Steve Merrill on X and Instagram. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for some more great free betting content coming up next.